this video, we'll look at how one might use Topsy Pro Analytics to conduct competitive analysis. To use an example, let's say that we were a marketing manager at Spotify, and we wanted to see what type of traction we're achieving in Twitter and in social media, what things we're doing that are successful, and what things that are maybe less successful, and then be able to compare that to how much traction competitors like iTunes and Pandora are achieving in social media. One of the first things that we might do as a marketing manager for Spotify is come into Topsy Pro Analytics and just type in the term Spotify. On the dashboard and on the activity tab, we can see the counts of conversation in Twitter, tweets or retweets mentioning the term Spotify with exact statistics for up to the minute data, minute by minute in the last hour. Or just as quickly, we could look back a much larger time range, like say all the way back to July of 2010. And I'll choose to view that with day level granularity so that we can see if there's particular spikes on individual days. And by doing that, I quickly see that the day that had the largest conversation around Spotify and Twitter in the last two years was on July 14th, which when I click and see the top tweets for that day, Topsy's quickly showing me that this was the day that Spotify launched in the United States. Topsy's able to do that by pulling out the most important tweets to the top of the list. And that relevance ranking is a very powerful way to be productive and analyzing what's happening inside Twitter for any term very, very quickly. The next thing I might want to do is to compare how many tweets and how much conversation there has been with the term Spotify relative to our official hashtag, hashtag Spotify. And this might be something that Spotify was trying to uh, encourage the use of inside Twitter. And by looking at this graph, we can see that they've been quite successful. Particularly in recent months, the conversation using hashtag Spotify has grown to be almost double that of tweets mentioning just the term Spotify. So this would be a great result I might want to report on internally. Next, if I want to compare how we're doing relative to say iTunes and Pandora, I can type those into my search and compare what the total conversation is for these three brands over the last two plus years. Now the result that I find is actually quite different. It turns out that sure enough, iTunes does have the largest share of conversation. However, Pandora in dark green as shown in this activity graph has been steadily gaining on iTunes and some days in recent months has actually had a higher share of conversation than iTunes had. Spotify, on the other hand, is, is quite a bit smaller than iTunes or Pandora. And if I wanted to drill in to maybe just compare Spotify to Pandora, I can click on iTunes in the legend of the graph, and here I see a comparison of just Pandora and Spotify, and the significant difference in how much conversation there is for Pandora relative to Spotify. So that's great for total conversation and total number of tweets that are mentioning these terms. The next thing I might want to see is what is the actual reach and impressions that we're achieving with each of these brands. And to look at that, I would go to the exposure tab. I'll maybe look at this for the last year. What I see from the exposure tab is that iTunes is getting dramatically higher gross impressions than Spotify or Pandora in the past year as far as mentions and tweets of these brands. So that's clearly concerning to me, but maybe is not totally in my control. What I might want to look at next is how we're doing from our official handles. And so I can compare the number of mentions for Pandora radio official Twitter handle to Spotify and iTunes by just typing in their official Twitter handles, those three official Twitter handles. And here I see a much more positive story for Spotify. The number of app mentions and the exposure achieved in tweets at mentioning Spotify was higher than iTunes for much of the past year. However, recently iTunes has pulled ahead and has more app mentions and exposure from those app mentions than Spotify. Pandora Radio in this case is much, much smaller. 
Now next, what I might want to do is be able to drill into how was iTunes achieving that gain in total exposure and surpassing Spotify, as well as see what things that Spotify were doing that are successful at increasing our total impressions inside Twitter so that we can maybe plan to do more of those in the future. To do that, I can just drill into each of the big spikes that are seen in this graph. And so for iTunes, I see a very large spike here on June 12th. Clicking in, I can see again with the relevance ranking, the top tweet is one related to an album launch from Usher. And so I can see here that today's the big day for a new album now out on iTunes from Usher. The next large spike that I click on looks to be a movie promotion from Snoop Dogg. And the third large spike is again a movie promotion from Snoop Dogg for the same movie. And so maybe not too surprising, these large spikes and gross impressions that iTunes is achieving are caused by major announcements. Uh, an album launch from Usher or a movie promotion from Snoop Dogg. These are major events uh, for, for the industry. Now, next let's look to see what's achieving you know, similar bumps in gross impressions for Spotify. We can see three major spikes for Spotify in the past year. And if I click on the first of those, the top tweet that's shown to me is Shakira updating her Spotify playlist. She does that twice, once in English and once in Spanish. That event of Shakira updating her playlist is achieving just as large a spike in gross impressions as movie promotions from Snoop Dogg and almost as large as the album launch from Usher. So let's see what the next second large spike is. Clicking on the second spike, again, it's an update of a playlist from Shakira. And clicking on the third large spike for Spotify, which is just as large, it's again just an album update, sorry, a, a playlist update for Shakira. So this has given me some real insight. What I've learned by looking at this exposure chart is the promotion from Spotify to sponsor prominent artists to update their Spotify playlists through Twitter is very, very successful and allows me to achieve a massive bump in my total exposure achieved through Twitter and social media. So large that it's just as large as very non-repeatable events that iTunes is using to achieve exposure in Twitter, like an album launch or a movie promotion. Album launches from Usher only come along sort of, you know, once every year or two years. But here, Shakira updated her playlist three times in less than a two month period. And so if we can encourage more artists to update their playlists through social media, um, that would achieve a dramatic increase in our total exposure and impressions through social media and would allow us to turn this curve so that we, again, are higher than the eight gross impressions that uh, iTunes is achieving. So this is a quick example of how you'd use two features of Topsy Pro Analytics, the Activity tab and the Exposure tab, to be able to do competitive analysis and gain insight into things that we're doing well, in this case Spotify, and things that our competitors are doing well to gain more exposure than us. And use that information to make decisions on how to perform more strongly inside social media relative to our competitors. Thanks for listening.